I was balls deep in that anti-feminist bullshit. Really, I was. Hey guys, it's me. Welcome back. Or welcome, if you're new. Because today, as you can see by the title, if you're not new here, it's a very different video to what I usually make. And it's also going to be fucking long. So like either like grab a cup of coffee or something or just like listen to me while you do your dishes. Because I mean... We all know they're still sitting there, it's okay, we all understand. But yeah, this video is very different, it might be a flop, if it is, that's okay, I'll just like shut up about politics and go back to talking about books and we'll pretend this never happened. But while this is a very sensitive topic, it is something that I am very passionate about, very interested in, and it's my channel, so if I want to share my personal growth and evolution when it comes to politics, I'm gonna do that. So this video idea came after I discussed certain issues with you guys in the comments from my Ben Shapiro video and it came to my attention that a lot of you could relate to me because I mentioned in passing that I used to call myself a conservative and a lot of you could relate and I was like oh shit it wasn't just All me. Alright guys well it looks like it's time for another alt-right pipeline video. Oh I'm sorry no this time it's the alt-right rabbit hole. So let's hear her story of how she was corrupted and, and how she found her way out and, and how we can also be saved. So today we are going to be talking about the alt-right rabbit hole and how I fell into it and eventually somehow crawled out of it. So here's a very brief introduction. If you're a sweet, sweet soul who doesn't really know what alt-right is, God bless you and also I'm here to explain it to you. God help us. So the alt-right is basically short for the alternative right and when you hear alt-right most people think nationalism, conservative, white supremacy, just far right in general. So this definition or I guess way of trying to describe the alt-right that she's opening with is a little bit interesting because to somebody who doesn't know what the alt-right is, it's not very useful because you'll need to have her particular conception of whatever she's referring to by things like nationalism, conservative, white supremacy, just far-right in general. With all these terms, it's deeply contentious what's actually meant by all of them because they're all used in such broad and varied ways. I would guess that if you were to ask her to identify any of these things, she would just list all of the other ones. In other words, I think that this is kind of just a, a pile of like self-referencing, just circular winning by definition sorts of a thing, because she's never going to actually explicate what any of these labels mean. She just kind of seems to have a vague idea, some sort of image, some sort of event, some sort of flavor associated with these labels. Um, and she puts all of the labels uh, predominantly into this, like, alt-right folder, I suppose. But if asked to actually explicate this, I don't think she can actually do it. And she's not going to in this video. It's very much an online phenomenon. It really took off in 2016. Um, and now it's kind of, like, dying down again a little bit. It's also a very fucking slippery slope. I mean, I guess we can take your word for it that it's a slippery slope, but, um, you know, the last time that, that somebody uh, made this sort of a claim and it got a lot of attention was Faraday Speaks, and, um, let's see, to him, the slippery slope was uh, he couldn't find a job, so he lived in his parents' home and smoked a lot of weed and played video games and left YouTube on autoplay, and somehow... Like, Stefan Molyneux got him into the alt-right, but he never really explains any of Molyneux's views um, or how they relate to anything else on, like, on some sort of a path at all. He simply just stated, yeah, I left a YouTube algorithm going and I just wasn't thinking. And, I mean, like, is this going to be the pattern now? Is, like, left-minded people... They think that, like, persuasion is violence. Like, at what point are leftists going to take any kind of responsibility for, like, like your own ideas? You know, are you just, like, dust in the wind? Are you just, like, like how fucking helpless are you? Okay, well, go make the case. Sorry. Perhaps, perhaps my judgment is not quite fair yet. Let's see if you can justify this claim that you had, like, no important agency, really, and it's just a big slip and slide and you just lost control. Because people don't start by telling you, 
you know what? The Nazis had the right idea of things. They don't. They, they just don't. It starts gradually. I would like to say, though, that I was never really, like, full-on alt-right. Well, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you didn't even go down the rabbit hole that you're referring to here. And you just told us it was slippery, but apparently it wasn't that slippery because you didn't even slide to the bottom. And now I'm wondering, like, what actually makes you some kind of an authority in the alt-right to make a video like this? You just, like, read a Wikipedia page? Because um, you're about to explain to us how your personal experience is not only not relevant, but, like, also made you less qualified to discuss these topics. Coming from a very privileged international background, I mean, I break into a cold sweat when people ask me where I'm from. I couldn't be nationalist if I tried. So I was kind of... <laughs> My silly bitch takes were kind of limited by my environment, which I am so grateful for. I'm really glad to hear that, and I'm really glad that you definitely don't have silly bitch takes anymore. But when it came to certain social issues like feminism, I was just, oh my god, I was so dumb. To this day, there's videos on my channel where I'm like, I'm not a feminist, but I don't like the not like other girls trope. This is another very amusing part of the video because there's a sub-theme of her self-flagellation based on her privilege. And you'll see, of course, she's signaling to everyone that she's very aware that, um, you know, she has wealth. And she's very aware of her whiteness. And she's very aware of all the great things that her socialist countries over in Europe are all doing for her, right? But <laughs> sandwiched right in the middle, she decided to do this little, this little tangent on feminism. And the first issue that comes to her mind is the not like other girls trope. Like, I, I just imagine if men's issues had the luxury of being this petty. But what's so amazing about this is it's right in a sandwich of her doing a self-flagellation of, oh, I'm so privileged, blah, 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 let me acknowledge my privilege, let me state it all. But then right in the middle, because she's she doesn't know anything about gendered issues, so therefore <laughs> she doesn't understand that women are privileged relative to men and that her female privileged far outweighs all the other ones, like, easily, trivially, easily demonstrable, um, but we're gonna learn pretty shortly on here, um, where her values lie, um, and how it ended up shaping her views, and it's a lot more simple than I'm making it out here, but I did think it was worth noting, um, you know, white women in general especially white liberal women, love to talk about privilege and all the privilege they have, except for one, and I think they know it. I think they know that being female privileges them, and then therefore they're trying to offset it because they want to keep and treasure their most precious privilege. I was really in a position where I didn't know a lot of minorities. I didn't really know a lot of people who were LGBT. I knew a few black people, but not that many, and the ones I knew were also very privileged. And really, I was brought up to be colorblind, I guess. And I mean this in the best way possible. I was brought up to think that all humans were equal. That's the most ordinary thing I've ever heard. And I wasn't American because, holy shit, race relations in America are fucking wild. I mean, they're a thing here in Europe as well, don't get me wrong, but like, America takes to a whole new level. So we see that uh, there does not appear to be an epidemic of people just shooting black people for no reason. Um, it appears to be that a typical case would involve a black person calling the police to deal with a black criminal who then resists arrest and gets shot by police who are in more danger than they are. Um, police who, when they're black, are even more likely to shoot the black people because they understand that this narrative you're peddling is stupid bullshit. When the 2016 elections rolled around, I got interested in politics for the very first time. The 2016 elections arrive, finally, and we have Donald Trump versus Hillary fucking Clinton, which can I just say, I had, and still have to this day, a hate boner for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> All right, we're, uh, we're halfway to the broken clock standard now. Europe was under constant terrorist attacks. There was this rise of populism in France, in Italy. Brexit was happening. And everything together just was a recipe for Barbara's political disaster. A disaster, really. Like, your opinion changed a little bit, and then it changed a little bit later on, and that's, that's like a hurricane. My friends were like, had more than one brain cell apparently because they didn't agree with me. So I thought I was going completely mad. So what I did was I went on the internet. 
Okay, but what disagreement? And how did they argue against it? Did they have any evidence? Why is the first place to go to an internet, right? right? Like, what are you doing? This isn't passing my sniff test. Like, like you're skipping so many steps. I wonder, like, if these are ideas that you actually understand and you're actually looking at the evidence and you're actually trying to learn about these things, where is the specificity? There's got to be some specific issue that you were talking about. Clearly, there's specific conversations. There's specific issues that you have to remember what it is you were arguing about. It wasn't that long ago. What is it? What evidence is there? What were your friends saying? And were these issues important at all to you such that you would you know, challenge them or confront them? There's just there's absolutely nothing fleshed out here in terms of a back and forth. So what's actually going on and why are you hiding it? and research shit about like Trump and Hillary and that kind of shit and that is when I found Blair White and her video why I voted for Trump and my 17 year old self was in shock a trans woman voting Trump does that mean he's not a bigot I went right to the comment section and that was flooded with minorities who said that they too had voted for Trump and I was like so wait has all this time that he's been banging on about fake news has that been true all right, well, she seems to be confused and was using being 17 as an excuse. So I'm going to break this down in a way that I think a seven-year-old can understand. I'd say probably even most five-year-olds would get it because it's pretty obvious and intuitive if you really stop and think about it. So let's look at arguments from anecdotes, right? So you have you, right? And then you have a fork. Either you have the experience, right? or you don't have the experience. Now, if you have the experience, now it goes one of two ways. You either support a claim or you don't support a claim based on your experience, right? And based on wherever you'd possibly end up in any combination of agreeing with the thing, disagreeing with the thing, having the experience and not having the experience, you can always just explain it away because based on the law of fucking averages, it's going to happen anyway. On one hand, she is going to dismiss any of her experiences that would suggest that there's something wrong with her position, right? Because those are just anecdotes to explain away. But then, of course, when she's speaking to her friends that are all trying to tell her about this, well, then, of course, how could she not listen to her friends? It's just, it's so stupid and obvious, and it applies to everything, and I just don't, I don't understand why she thinks being 17 is an excuse for... She, she couldn't have been that dumb. I think that she's projecting a dumber version of herself into the past to make herself feel more smart now. That's the only, that's the most charitable explanation here by far. I started to get exposed to more creators who took the piss out of SJW snowflakes. And, and I wonder if they're gonna have anything in common besides taking the piss out of SJWs. The main factor in all of this is YouTube influence. Armored Skeptic, Steven fucking Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Sargon of a Cup. Unless you count being white, uh, no. The only thing that they have in common is criticism of SJWs. Um, from this group, it's not even majority right-wing economically. Um, Self-described liberals, which is uh, antithetical to most of the alt-right. Uh, not a single alt-right personality here at all. But I could go on. Please do. I was a fan of Blair White. I watched Shoe on Head, Hunter Avalone. By the way, this dude, last time somebody had such a good character redemption arc, it was Zuko from The Last Airbender. Very few of his positions change. He just shifted the labels around, which seems to be entirely what, what you're doing here. Because so far, there's absolutely nothing of substance to suggest that any actual views that you have have changed. Um, with one exception, and um, in lieu of actually responding to this entire video, um, I'm just going to skip right to that part and then um, wrap this one up here. I was in a fucking echo chamber. Me and my privileged ass had never really experienced sexism or not in a direct way, you know? I, I was never told, oh, you want to go to university? Shouldn't you be in the kitchen? I was never told that shit. So one thing you'll notice about this section of the video is we've returned, of course, to the theme of the privilege-based self-flagellation, but 
here's a, a, a neat irony. Um, just as I mentioned before, she's completely unaware of a concept of female privilege. That just totally is off of her radar. She claims to be, um, quote-unquote, balls deep into anti-feminism, or that she was at a time, yet at no point does she mention men's issues. Um, at no point does she touch upon, you know, the fact that those are the grounds for criticizing feminism, is that we have a lot of actual gendered issues, actual serious issues, not the kind of fake bullshit that you just tried to make up as a fake scenario for how you might at some point experience sexism in a hypothetical. And it's just so profound, right, that like to suggest to a white woman like her, right, that, you know, you got female privilege, male privilege, not so much a thing. You got the narrative backwards, right? You know, she, she'll give that people that spiel regarding whites versus blacks or like what any number of other characteristics, but not the gendered one, even though right here she's acknowledging like, oh, I'm actually not oppressed as a woman. And, and it never occurs to her that the larger, more serious arguments that anti-feminists are making might be true. Instead, she seems to just conflate it all with making fun of feminists for being cringe. All it took was for one dude on the internet, or girl, whatever, people on the internet in general, fuck, to tell me, you're a feminist? Are you playing the victim card? You don't want to be seen as a victim, do you? So I was just like, oh, fuck no. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a feminist. What are you talking about? Feminism? We don't know her. What? Hmm, it's almost as though these aren't genuinely held beliefs, but instead they're just kind of Pavlovian um, subconscious reactions to stimuli. Um, yeah, and when someone squirt you with that water bottle when you were a feminist, you just decided to drop the label because it wasn't important to you, because you don't care about gender equality, you never cared about any of the issues that feminists talk about, and you never cared about any of the issues that the anti-feminists talk about either. Um, in fact, you didn't care about politics until 2016. I guess you're a little bit younger, so that, you know, maybe makes sense or whatever. But, you know, you just kind of described it as a big party. There's no particular political issues that you seem to actually be passionate about or really care about. Um, you like your universal health care because you don't know anything else. Um, but, yeah, it really just seems like you just are following hedonic signals and then just kind of um, dressing up your labels and feng shuiing it around a little bit to keep your cognitive dissonance at bay. And that, that seems to be a, a thorough and very accurate description of what's going on in this entire video. Um, I'd be interested to see a counterexample, but I don't think I'm going to get one. Whenever my friends complained about things like pads being expensive, period pads being expensive, I just like, in my mind, I'm just like, oh, you're so misguided. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Did you know that the wage gap is a myth? When like, I wish I could go back and tell myself, Barbara, just because you haven't had your period in six months because of your out of control eating disorder, doesn't mean your friends have that problem. And then I started getting my period again and would you believe it, I understood why they were complaining because pads are fucking expensive. Now I'm open to being corrected on this point, but I am just gonna go ahead and make the call. Um, how I see it based on the context here, um, especially given in this video she does explicitly state that she is in favor of universal health care. Um, and therefore, when her friends are complaining about tampons being too expensive, the, the obvious thing that they're complaining in favor of is for the government to subsidize it, to make it free in some way. Um, this is a popular feminist position, it's been enacted in many places. Um, she seems to have mixed up the pink tax with the wage gap, right? Because the pink tax, in theory, that would be part of the discussion regarding the price of tampons. I mean, not directly, there's other issues regarding the so-called pink tax, but um, she mentions the wage gap as if that would be relevant in that conversation. And she seems to be suggesting that she does not believe that the wage gap is a myth. And I'm curious about that because that's pretty easy to debunk. Um, there don't seem to be that many people who like unironically would still champion that position. So I'm not sure what she's getting at there. That like a matter of fact wise, anti-feminists are 100% correct. And when you promote ideas like the pink tax or the wage gap, um, that's a form of like slander. It's actually like like an, it's, 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 a, it's an evil thing to do. This isn't like a good faith, oh, I'm going to talk about an issue. This is you're slandering half of humanity as just bigots. 
and you should stop it because it's a it's an insidious and fucking evil thing to do but really this is the great takeaway from this video what causes her to well think she's changed her opinion what causes her to switch around her cosmetic labels what's the most important thing in this woman's empty fucking head oh now i have to pay for tampons oh let me steal it through the government that's her morality it's pavovlian um because you know she wants to have her free shit she doesn't care about if it's going to involve stealing from other people because you know the moment that it's something that she perceives as to her immediate self-benefit then there you go bam now it's good and what's remarkable too is like her friends are complaining about this issue and that's not good enough right as soon as her as a woman in particular sees it in her particular interest then it becomes an issue that is to women's perceived benefit in general right and it just goes straight to it like this is just selfish solipsistic shallow bullshit um, and it needs to get called out more often you know when young women say things like this they should be challenged because she's advocating terrorism She's advocating terrorism in the name of ganking people for fucking tampons. And, you know, you can see her place. She's got money. Fuck you. Buy your own tampons. And tell your friends to go fuck themselves, too. Buy your own fucking tampons. I Just befuddled. And to imagine that the men's rights movement and anti-feminists in general would complain about a reciprocal men's issue that could conceivably be this petty? No, not at all. Um, so yeah, within that context, you know, this isn't just some person explaining their personal development and don't eat me alive for my opinion. You're stating your preference for a terrorist monopoly to gank me in order to pay for your fucking rags. So how about you buy your own rags and, uh, and that's it. Stop robbing people.